Hey everyone, this is probably going to be one of our most abstract videos yet. Previously, we discussed the 10 Sefirot and their significance in the manifestation of reality according to Kabbalah. It covers the entire tree of life from Keter, the uppermost sphere of infinite unmanifested potential, all the way down to Malchut, the tangible and physical reality in which we reside. Today, we are going to continue going deeper into this topic. If you haven't seen the previous Tree of Life episode so far, we highly recommend going back and getting the basics down before going too far. Up until now, we have briefly mentioned that there is a connection between the Tree of Life and the Hebrew alphabet. At last, it's time we establish what that connection is and open the discussion on the 22 creative forces. On the Tree of Life, there are 22 pathways drawn between the 10 Sefirot. In the Sefer Yetzirah, the most ancient text available on Jewish esotericism, these are described as the remaining 22 paths in the 32 paths of wisdom, which follow the 10 Sefirot. When looking at these pathways, they would represent the active movement of energy from one Sefira to another. For example, the path between Keter and Chokmah is seen in essence as pure formlessness moving into the first emanation of creation. The 22 pathways are most commonly represented by the Hebrew alphabet, which is said to be a series of sounds based on the 22 most essential frequencies of creation. Through the Sefirot, these frequencies are said to express the process of creation as it manifests from the incorporeal realms of God all the way down into the physical reality which we are experiencing now. This is the very same process that describes how thoughts, feelings, and inspirations enter into our consciousness along their journey from the higher realms and thus informing our bodies as to the tangible actions that we perform in our day-to-day -day lives. These letters are also often represented by very abstract concepts. And so as we go through them in this video, we encourage you to practice seeing these not as the image associated with the letter, such as an ox, a house, a camel, and so on, but look at what the essence of the idea is. All of the images that are associated with the letters should be seen as simple abstracts used to express the nature of an idea. Before we dive in, there are a few other things we have to look at briefly. First, the Hebrew alphabet is divided into three unique groupings. These are called the mother letters, the double letters, and the single or simple letters. In essence, the mothers are the root forces from which the remaining letters descend from. The doubles all have dual natures, describing opposing concepts like life and death, wisdom and folly, or peace and war. These all have multiple pronunciations as well. The single letters each represent singular ideas and bear singular pronunciations. Further, the three mothers represent the Holy Trinity, as well as the elements air, water, and fire. The seven double letters correlate to the seven planets, seven alchemical metals, or in Hermetic Kabbalah, the seven chakras. Finally, the 12 single letters relate to the 12 signs of the zodiac. Together, all 22 pathways correlate with the 22 major arcana on the tarot, and we'll come back around to this topic at the end of the video. With all of this in mind, the final item we must discuss is that, as mentioned in a previous episode, there are principally two tree of life models which can be looked at, the standard tree and the Lurian tree. Each of these models have their own unique placement of the 22 pathways, which can be seen as a right and left brain of each other, or the linear and abstract variations. In the standard tree, they are placed linearly from top to bottom and right to left, starting with the first letter at the top and ending with the last letter on the bottom. The Lurian tree, on the other hand, observes the relationships in a different way. The three mother letters are the three horizontal lines, the seven double letters are placed upon the seven vertical lines, and the 12 single letters are placed upon the 12 diagonal lines. Each of these versions of the tree bear a great deal of information and learning that can be extrapolated within one's consciousness. For now, and just to keep things simple, we'll be exploring the traditional Hebrew meanings in relationship to the standard model of the Tree of Life, which is also the model most commonly used in the tarot. For those who want to explore the relationships to the Lurian Tree, you are encouraged to dive in as you see fit. Now, as with the Sefirot, each of the pathways correlate to both the micro and macrocosm, meaning they bear significance to our individual lives and the universe on a greater scale. So today, we'll do our best to provide a simple explanation of both the creation of reality from heaven to earth, as well as their relationship to you personally. For those who want an even deeper explanation of these letters, 
we encourage you to check out our book, The Book of Patch, which comes with Patch Tarot. We also recommend starting a daily meditation upon each letter in sequence to grasp a deeper meaning of the symbols and gain a more personal experience of these primary forces. Finally, please keep in mind that no matter what, truly connecting with the love in your heart is the great key to everything. All of this information, the pathways, and so on may serve as a powerful tool which we can use to support connecting our egos with our higher selves so that we may more fully comprehend the reality that we are a part of. Without further ado, here are the 22 pathways of the tree of life. The first path, Aleph. Located between Keter and Chokmah, Aleph describes the principle and primary force of creation. Aleph is most commonly symbolized as an ox, implying a great and powerful force. Thousands of years ago, the ox was a symbol of the raw power of the earth and the power that can be harnessed to do all manner of things. Aleph represents the first and only creative force, where all preceding creative forces are simply different states that this original force can move into. In this primal state of pure beingness, it is not a force in action. In fact, it's not doing anything. It is the essence of infinite potential in perfect stillness. To us, it represents perfection beyond human comprehension. The second path, Bet. The letter Bet can be observed as the start of the story of creation, as the first letter is actually silent. In this, we also have the beginning of duality, seeing both the creator and created. Bet is often represented by a house as it implies the idea of a container or vessel by which the created world may come into being just as the body is the container for the soul. It is the idea of a container, though nothing yet contained. In a simpler sense, this is the same unmoving power as Aleph, but now it has become aware that it may organize itself in some way. To us, it represents the basis of the awareness of multiplicity within unity. The third path, Gimel. Gimel is an expansion of that which came before it, the essential consciousness with form expanding both beyond and inside of itself. Gimel emerges as the third and unifying pathway, resolving and harmonizing the opposites between the first two, forming a sacred link. Gimel relates with Camel, the self-sufficient animal that travels for days across the desert, which otherwise was uncrossable in ancient times. Back then, Camels were seen as this sacred golden creature capable of moving through the sandy abyss. The camel's journey bears significance to the tree of life by representing the pathway which crosses the barrier between Hokma and Bina, referred to as the abyss. This process of consciousness traversing the abyss is also referred to as the dark night of the soul, a period of suffering or facing one's own death, after which the soul dissolves into unity and emerges enlightened. Further, Gimel is a symbol of the expansion of civilization and creation through different states of being. To us, it may also represent the spirit of giving and receiving, the unification of opposites, and the deep intuition of just simply knowing. The fourth path, Dalet. Dalet is the pathway of dimension and is also sometimes seen as the path of humility and receptiveness. Dalet relates with a door and embodies the concept of shape and the idea of going through. A door is a gateway through a solid object like a wall. Esoterically, a door is a special kind of void, so to speak, that you can pass through from one state to another. This is a place on the tree of life where we now have dimension moving between states, where before we only had pure energy and its expansion. To us, Dalet represents the nullification of the ego in the presence of the spirit and how to return to the source. The fifth path, Hay. Hay is symbolized by a window and represents a point of view. It is a window to divine revelation or a perspective that has to do with the way that you express yourself. It's sort of like the concept of looking yet not specifically looking at anything because so far nothing is actually manifested yet in this region of the tree of life. Put simply, this path represents the perspective of the essential observing capacity within creation and the expression of this core perspective setting things in motion. We can relate this to our quantum physics double slit experiment, where we learn that simply observing something affects both us and the result of what becomes manifested. From the perspective of God, 
you might consider that setting a perspective on something sets motion to the creative process. This letter symbolizes the effortlessness of the world and the symbol of divinity. The sixth path, Vav. Vav is the pathway of the learning and teaching of cosmic law. It is the sixth path, and so the binder or unifier of energies. Vav often means nail, or sometimes hook or anchor, which is meant to represent the thing that joins other things together and hold them in that state. This is the cosmic principle that allows atoms to form bonds together and create molecules. However, at this ethereal level, there is still nothing manifested yet. Thus, this is the power of the creator to enter into the world. To us, it represents the geometry of the Merkaba and the connection between heaven and earth. The seventh path, Zion. Zion commonly means sword or weapon and also relates sometimes to the concept of a tool. Often, weapon in our minds bear significance to war and violence, but the concept here has more to do with the essence of power unused, like a samurai who meditates with his sword, unmoving but focused, or even the captain or general whose sword comes as a symbol of the power that they command. This commanding aspect also relates to the carpenter or gardener who commands various tools to create new things with virtue and care. And so, the ability for spirit to actually build and materialize things now exists. To us, this is the concept of movement and the struggle and balance between opposing forces, including the awareness of being a unified spirit and an individual soul at the same time. The eighth path, Chet. Chet has several main descriptors. The most common is that of a fence or ladder, though sometimes also described as a hedge. The idea behind the fence or hedge is that of a boundary layer by which the creation can become manifested within. And a ladder is really just a fence on its side, delineating the multidimensional boundary that is being created. The concept of fence and ladder are very interesting too, because with a simple twist, the idea changes to that of DNA. This is also relative to the concept of Jacob's ladder, which comes from a story in the Bible where a character named Jacob has a vision of an eternal spiraling pillar of light which was said to be an insight into the higher dimensions all the way to unity consciousness with God. For us, in this way, we can connect Chet to the ability to go above and beyond our earthly limitations. The ninth path, Tet. The ninth path is very curious indeed because of the wide array of potentials that it can describe. The two most common relations are that of a basket and of a serpent. This is the mystery of Tet in that it can represent polarities such as good and evil by the nature of the serpent being both related to the Ouroboros, a symbol of wholeness and infinity, and the serpent in the Garden of Eden from Genesis. The imagery of a basket, on the other hand, is often said to represent the open container as opposed to the closed container from before and manifestation of each unique soul in the process of creation. Tet also has one more representation, although much less common, and that is mud. This is the birth of density and mass, though still nothing yet is manifested. But now the energetic substance for creation comes into being, like the unused clay before the sculptor gives it form. To us, this letter teaches us to distinguish between what we perceive to be good and bad, and to strive for the purity of that which is holy and good in our lives. The 10th path, Yud. Yud relates with the hand, and speaks to the operation and operator of the world. Building upon what came before, there was an ethereal tool that could be used to create things, the primordial mud that can now be shaped, and now Yud is the hand of the operator which uses the created powers and the intelligence to know how to use the primordial mud which came before. In a simpler sense, it is the power of spirit to govern and guide the materially created. The Yud is drawn as a dot and describes that creation came from a single point and that singularity is the essence of all of life. To us, this may be experienced as the singularity in our hearts which brings life to our bodies. And this is the same power of spirit to govern and guide the material universe. The 11th path, Kaf. Kaf relates to the palm of the hand and may either be like a cupped, outstretched palm waiting to receive or an upright palm held high like a crossing guard moving traffic, or like when you push or invoke something to happen. It is similar to the idea of a container, but relates more to the potentials and possibilities of that which can be received by matter, by the power of spirit. 
and likewise, the ways in which spirit can move matter. It relates to the beginning of formation or things made more solidified. Now that there is primordial mud and the intelligence of knowing how to use it, this is the actual motion of creation itself. This path holds the space for all created possibilities, including physical matter. For us, Kaf teaches us to shape our characters, continually refine ourselves and bring spirit into the material world. The 12th path, Lamed. Lamed relates with ox goad and sometimes staff or needle. This is a symbol of learning as Lamed sits at the center of the 22 pathways. It indicates learning at the level of the soul and teaches that spiritual learning is at the heart of human experience. The idea of ox goad relates to the prodding from the higher forces for the soul to learn. The staff relates to the learned sage and the needle relates to the getting into, like the essence of consciousness entering into its structured creation. To us, Lamed simply tells us to strive to learn everything there is to learn and never stop attaining new levels of wisdom. In this, we discover one of the great meanings of life itself, the never ending expansion of our learning consciousness. The 13th path, Mem. The idea of Mem is related to water and describes the energy which has now become subtly tangible. This is not physically tangible, but energy that can be felt and is often described in other systems as chi, life force, or vital energy. This is raw energy which can be shaped, but it still lacks solidification. By following in this way, Mem has the virtue of consistency and describes a stable intelligence. Mem and the element of water is also often regarded as the divine mother or Shakti. The universe is the womb of creation and it is out of this substance of creation which we come to be. Our bodies are mostly water after all. For us personally, Mem speaks towards balanced emotion and the power of humility. The 14th path, Nun. Nun is the path of the fish who travels through the waters of Mem. The idea of something more solid or tangible within the fluidity. In this, the meaning is symbolic of the soul who recognizes its infinite nature. It leaves behind the desires of life only to be replaced with the freedom to continually change forms in all of the ways that it can through the process of death and rebirth. Noon speaks towards the relationship between the body, which is impermanent, and the soul, which is eternal. In this, we learn about flexibility and suppleness, going with the flow, adapting to changes, and not resisting the new experiences that come our way. The 15th path, Samek. Samek describes the essence of support, such as that of a pillar, and represents the pathway of upliftment. In a sense, the idea here is the support that the soul uses to uphold its earthly vessel and vice versa. It is power, such as power unused with Zion previously. However, this time the power has a function, and this function is standing still with great strength. The function is the key, this is the power which supports all of the processes that led to something more solid begetting form within the waters of potentiality so that it can have the strength and support to stay manifested. To us, Samek teaches us circular thinking, both to act for the good of the whole, not solely for the self, and simultaneously that in order to know spirit, we must know ourselves. The 16th path, Ion. The letter ion relates to an eye and has to do with the illumination of that which is hidden and the observation and perception of images. These are most commonly thought of as mental or astral images, the ideas of what could still come to be formed physically. It also describes a focus in that there are an infinite number of things that we may focus on, but by choosing our focus carefully, we set our destinies into action. Ion also implores us to open our inner eye and see beyond the physical realm. It also teaches us to pay attention for conscious attention may very well be of the highest skills we can develop as a species with mind. The 17th path, Pei. Pei translates to mouth and this is the pathway of communication. In a cosmic sense, it is the power of transmission, the power of causing something to pass from one state to another. For us, it is the power of speech and teaches us to view our words as being as precious as gold, to treat them with respect and to recognize the power that they have in their influence over ourselves and others. The 18th path, Zadi. 
Zadi most commonly relates with fish hook, and this pathway describes the ability to align the lower personality with the higher soul. Very commonly, this is described as the angling of the personality to bring it into resonance with the spirit. For us, the nature of Zadi is righteousness and humility, facing our own inner evils and restoring balance within in order to bring the greater world around us back into harmony with nature. The 19th path, Kof. Kof relates with the back of the head and is associated with self-awareness. It represents the place in the mind where visual and mental images create the reality we conceive, perceive, and quite often believe. This letter also relates with the lower or subconscious programming within manifested life, such as what in our modern times we call the reptile brain. It describes the need to reprogram these lower aspects of ourselves, which are very animalistic in nature. These are our survival instincts and often quite violent or at the very least unrefined. In the brain, this action is all happening in the cerebellum, the basis of connection between the nervous system, brain, and body. The 20th path, Reish. Where Kof was the lower brain, Reish relates with the idea of the top of the head and sometimes face, speaking towards the higher mind and the individual identity. Here there is power to interact with the world and structure and shape the world as we want. This letter speaks towards identification and definitions because in order to live in the world we do, we need to have definitions to work with. Ultimately, definitions and words subjectively define the world we live in, giving structure and meaning to our experience. This path speaks towards the ability to choose between greatness and degradation, and upon choosing greatness, embodying the true spirit of the creator in form. The 21st path, Shin. Shin relates with the idea of a tooth, but also represents the element of fire. It speaks towards the human ability to change and be changed by everything in life, within us and our environments throughout all of time. Further, both a tooth and fire are symbols of the force which breaks down and transmutes energy from one state to another. This is thus that transformation, the breaking down of something in order to change its form, whether it be breaking down food to transform it into something our bodies can digest or firing clay to solidify it into a pot. For us, this speaks to balance between opposing states and extremes. The 22nd path, Taf. The final pathway is called Taf, which relates with ideas such as world, cross, mark, or seal. The concept here is, it is complete, or the work is done. Sort of like an X marks the spot connotation as well, the finishing point, the grand finale. This finished creation is of course, the physical universe, as the process of creation has brought everything together and into its final form, however that manifests physically. Even you in your wholeness are an entire ecosystem unto yourself, but still a part of something much greater. Much like with the Sephirot, Toph compounds all of the previous pathways together, bringing everything to a close, or as we discussed in a previous video, the halfway point and the state from which life is born and strives to return back to its divine origin point. This pathway teaches us that from the very beginning of a journey, the end was already set out before us. In this way, we not only create the world we live in, but the heaven we are moving towards as well. If you follow Krishna and ascend in his style, you go to Krishna's heaven. If you follow Jesus and accomplish yourself as he did, you will go to Jesus's heaven. Much in the same way, if you create your own path to ascension and others follow it successfully, they will go to your heaven. Understanding fully that all of these heavens are but one in the same, different vibrations or aspects of a greater harmonious unified body of creation. The end and the beginning are one and Taf is the pathway of completion. The moment Taf is achieved, we begin again at Aleph and the end becomes the beginning and the beginning, the end. And with that, we conclude our exploration of the 22 creative forces. As we bring this video to a close, please know that these descriptions are just the tip of the iceberg in understanding these massive concepts. And we know that in just getting started with these, well, this is quite a lot as it is. With that said, there is another way to understand these letters from a more visual perspective, and that is through the tarot. As our patch tarot episodes continue, we're going to be exploring this exact same path 
but as it relates to the major arcana in greater detail. For those who are more visually oriented in your learning style, the tarot combines a fusion of symbolism, astrology, numerology, and of course, Kabbalah, in order to describe the tree of life in a very simple way to comprehend. And on that note, we actually have a very special announcement coming soon. Patch Tarot is getting a major update with several massive changes and improvements to the cards, which brings them even more into alignment with the ancient symbols and systems. For those of you who want to be notified about this special announcement, you can sign up to get notifications on our website, spiritsciencecentral.com slash tarot update. Regardless of what method you choose to explore these pathways, all of this information is presented at this time as a structure to help make sense of life, reality, and spirituality by exploring these ancient and essential archetypes. Doing so supports us to live from our hearts and connect with everything around us. So thank you again so much for joining us today, and we'll see you again real soon. Ciao.